Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. Check the description for links to these and more. Now let's get into the video. Hey, sniper! I'm gonna be all over ya! Nah, you! <laughs> Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. So, about four and a half years ago, I made a little video you may have seen talking about the classic, arguably TF2's worst sniper rifle unlock. In it, I mentioned that the Sydney Sleeper will also likely one day get its own video covering it. Well, better late than never, I guess. But this video has taken so long to get done for a couple of reasons. For one, I'm incredibly biased. There's two things I just really don't like about playing Sniper, and those are hard scoping and getting body shots, meaning the Sydney Sleeper is not a weapon I look upon fondly. It's still not my least favorite, though. And two, this is one of the most confusingly designed weapons in the entire game. And for so long, I've had no idea how to even approach it, especially considering how difficult it is to decipher what I dislike about the weapon as part of bad design, and what part of it is just my biases coming forward. So please indulge me as I go on to explain exactly why the Sydney Sleeper is such a basket case of a weapon. As far as the sniper rifle unlocks go, the Sydney Sleeper is unique. It deals the same damage as the stock rifle, but with the main exception that it will not deal critical headshots, only dealing mini crits. For most snipers, this is a deal breaker since now your 150 damage quickscopes that can normally drop most enemies will deal just slightly more damage than a melee hit. But to make up for this, the Sydney Sleeper charges 25% faster than stock, meaning even though you're dealing less burst damage, you can charge up your shots a lot faster to still deal significant damage. Arguably the main draw of the weapon is that if you're scoped in for the necessary 0.2 second wait duration it normally takes to quickscope, any hit against an enemy will afflict them with Jurati, and how long the Jurati is applied to that enemy depends on the level of your charge. This means you charge up a shot quickly and apply Jurati to the enemy for longer. Simple internal synergy. There's also an absolutely bizarre stat that rewards you with one second of reduced Jurati cooldown for every headshot you hit. This one's a deep dive, I'll get to it when I get to it. And finally, whether scoped or unscoped, if you see a teammate on fire, you can shoot them with the Sydney Sleeper in order to extinguish them. So, what is the design philosophy here? Well, ask any Sydney Sleeper sniper and they'll tell you. This is, without question, a support weapon. It trades your ability to deal high burst damage for the ability to mark enemies for death from a distance and charge up your shots a lot faster. On paper, this sounds like a very reasonable series of upsides balanced out by a game-changing downside. On paper. Okay, let's break this down piece by piece. Let's start with the Jurati application. This function is tied to the charge level of your rifle. The higher the charge, the longer the Jurati application, like I said. This sounds good at first, but as anyone who talks about how much they hate quickscopes will tell you, 150 damage is kind of a lot, and is enough to kill 5 out of 9 classes in the game in a single shot. What this means is that instead of these benefits synergizing with each other as is intended, they're counterintuitive because you're not going to be getting a full length Jurati duration on a lot of your targets. You're just going to be killing them. And if you end up going for headshots, this is even worse since the mini crits will just end up outright killing even more classes, crossing the threshold to kill overhealed light classes, as well as soldiers, pyros, and demos, unless they happen to have a health boosting item that crosses the 200 HP threshold. So this is triple counterintuitive, because now you're being rewarded for charging up to full and hitting headshots, all in the name of invalidating the most unique aspect of the gun, and all while being completely inferior in this regard to every other rifle in the game. Because if you're going to be hitting fully charged headshots on people, then you'd be better off using literally anything else, the classic included. Oh and by the way, those headshots, all they do is give you mini crits. 
they don't extend the Jurati duration at all. It is only tied to your charge. But okay, let's ignore the headshots thing since that's the MO of a lot of sleeper snipers anyway. What if you're just hitting fully charged body shots on higher health targets or ones who are overhealed? Or hell, even a fully charged headshot on a heavy or overhealed power class since that's all that's surviving that. Well, in that case, how long does the full Jurati duration last? Five seconds. Half as long as the duration of the Jurati secondary weapon. The minimum amount of Jurati you can apply only lasts for two seconds. So the difference between not charging at all and full charge is only three seconds of application. And if those overhealed targets are still being healed by a medic, that cuts the duration in half, meaning the duration will last anywhere from one second to two and a half against players currently being healed. This has a massive domino effect on how much you can even be supportive with this weapon because having it be such a short window means your teammates won't have all that much time to react unless you shoot someone who's already in a firefight. And if that's the case, that's even more chance that they're already injured enough for a single shot to take them out altogether. And hey, if you think that simply shooting people from a distance is a great way to support your team, then I have a fantastic selection of weapons for you to choose from that help you towards this goal. Another issue with this is that the more damage you deal to an enemy with more charge, the less necessary the Jurati is in the first place, because they're already going to be at such low health that mini crit damage isn't going to be all that much help to begin with. Let me put this into perspective. It takes a fully charged shot to give you half of the duration of Jurati to one person, compared to Jurati itself, where you simply throw it in the general direction of a group of people, apply double the duration to all of them at once, and then do the same thing again 20 seconds later while still being able to actually deal headshot damage with your primary. I seriously think that people are so conditioned to use the Jurati selfishly that they see the Sydney Sleeper as a far more valid support tool because it handcuffs you into that role and doesn't allow you to play the game in any other way, all while ignoring the fact that Jurati is one of the strongest support tools in the entire game if you actually bother to use it as one, and it still lets you use a real goddamn primary. And you might be saying that the intention isn't to use the Sydney Sleeper with the Jurati because that's redundant, and I'd be very willing to agree with you there if not for this stupid ass stat that rewards and encourages the player to use Jurati with the gun. Hitting headshots with the Sydney Sleeper rewards you by letting you throw the weapon that invalidates its very existence slightly more often? What the actual fuck is this stat? So for once in my life, I'm going to recommend against using Jurati if you want to be the most effective with this weapon. Don't misunderstand, Jurati is an extremely powerful tool and one of the strongest weapons in the game, but that's kind of its problem when you place it next to the Sydney Sleeper. It's so strong that it ends up invalidating the gun. It's quickly and easily applied to a large group of people, recharges for free, and it gives you full mobility and visibility while you use it compared to the Sydney Sleeper where you have to hold still for just over two and a half seconds to get half of the same effect on one person assuming the shot doesn't outright kill them to begin with. Unless you only plan on using the Sydney Sleeper to maximize how much you can use Jurati, in other words, unless you plan on using the Jurati as your primary weapon, then I'd advise against this combo. And this leads us to our next set of issues, hard scoping. You don't really have a choice in the matter. If you want to either deal damage or be supportive, this is your only way forward. There are some instances where taking a pot shot into a crowd your team is attacking will land you a nice mini crit assist even with no charge, and these moments are satisfying, but the lack of feedback on how injured an enemy is makes it difficult to decipher how many of these actually matter, especially in a big chaotic team fight. I know a weapon that would be more helpful than those. Anyway, this is arguably one of the better ways to use the Sydney Sleeper. Hang back, hard scope, hit body shots, and hit them faster than other snipers would be able to. This is especially helpful for less skilled snipers who aren't likely to hit headshots in the first place. If you're not very good at sniper and all you can hit are body shots anyway, 
then this gun is more or less a straight upgrade. But there are some more stationary targets that even the dopiest of snipers can headshot that you just lose all advantage against. And one of those is enemy snipers. Now that's not to say that all enemy snipers are going to be easy targets without the Sydney Sleeper. Some of them are so good you may as well just pick a different class because you're so outmatched. But with the Sydney Sleeper, that is every single encounter with an enemy sniper. Unless they're using the same weapon, you are always at a disadvantage. And there is zero advantage to equipping it. Even sniper primaries less equipped to dealing with other snipers will give you some kind of advantage. The Huntsman allows you to be far more mobile and aggressive, and the Classic gives you full visibility and eliminates tunnel vision while still allowing you to one-shot light classes with a body shot. But with the Sydney Sleeper, you need to rely on the enemy sniper to make a mistake or a series of mistakes if you want to be the one to kill him. He needs to miss a shot or be inattentive or distracted, and hey, don't get me wrong, these situations aren't uncommon, but if it's a simple 1v1 where you're both aware of each other, then you'll need to pull out all the stops to stand a chance against him, and if he does the same to you, then it's all over. You'll need to reposition and take him out from various unexpected angles often if you want to stand a chance, but again, you need to pray he doesn't do the same to you. The irony here is that your skill level needs to be far higher than the enemy snipers in order to reliably take him out with a weapon that many people equip specifically because they're not all that good at sniper in the first place. Hardscoping also leaves you far more vulnerable against spies and flankers, and this is even worse considering you don't have access to critical quickscopes. Which are unreliable, sure, but at least you can try to hit them. This is the one situation where I would say that Jurati is acceptable to use. In the shitty, annoying, selfish way that everyone already uses it in, but at least there's a solid point to it there. Because you're just so vulnerable. But hey, even if its damage output is worse than all of its contemporaries, and even if it makes you more vulnerable against everything you're already weak against, and even things you're supposed to be strong against, at least you can still use it as a support weapon, right? Well, mostly yeah, but that doesn't mean it's without issue. One of the issues I have with this is that snipers are analogous to opportunistic, sit-and-wait predators who take what they can get. Kind of like a crocodile or a trapdoor spider. You're not always going to be with your team, and your team isn't always going to be in your line of sight. For some maps, they will be. Koth maps serve this weapon fairly well in my experience, but if your team needs support in an area without a solid sightline, there just isn't much you can do. Guess which weapon this isn't an issue with? With Jurati, you don't need to put yourself in a risky position to be a team player. The splash damage and arc of Jurati lets you code a group of enemies from around corners or above inclines and out of their line of sight so you don't get put at risk and don't subject yourself to tunnel vision. I'm sorry that I keep bringing up the Jurati as a point of comparison, but I feel it's apt considering it's literally the exact same effect, but straight up better and easier to apply, and on the same class in a far more convenient weapon slot. And by the way, this is all under the assumption that your teammates decide to follow up on your shot. I've been in plenty of situations where even 10 seconds on an entire soaked team with the Jurati still isn't enough to encourage a push, and the Sydney Sleeper's 5 max seconds on one target is no different. It's hard to judge its effectiveness as a support weapon objectively, because that's something that comes down to a player's personal experience with the weapon. In general, I'd say that my teammates' response to enemies I had soaked was mixed. Sometimes, it encouraged my teammates to push forward into the enemy, but even when that was the case, it wasn't always to their benefit. The short duration of the Jurati application can sometimes fake your teammates out into taking a fight they're not actually ready for. It's not like they know how much damage your shot actually did to them. Although, while I was critical of the fact that the application of Jurati is less and less necessary the more damage your shot does, I will at least say that the visual indicator is a good excuse to get your teammates to attack the enemy in the first place. It's just unfortunate that's all it's doing on more charged shots. But listen, if the situation favors you, and all of the stars align, then the Sydney Sleeper can work as an okay support weapon. It's just a support function served better by another weapon. 
but there's one situation where it absolutely does not work well as a support weapon. Extinguishing teammates. Now you might be thinking, Fish, what are you talking about? Extinguishing teammates with a single bullet instead of an incredibly versatile and highly powerful projectile on a 20 second cooldown is a fantastic utility. And you're absolutely right. When it fucking works. I have pumped bullet after bullet after bullet into burning teammates and it's gone straight through them until a pyro walks by or they stop burning on their own or they just straight up die. And I can't even begin to fathom why. Sometimes it works as expected. Sometimes it doesn't. It's seriously one of the most inconsistent mechanics I have ever seen in this game, and I've played Spy. Oh, and by the way, apparently the fact that it extinguishes teammates out of scope is a bug. That should be a feature. It's just way more practical than needing to zoom in every time you want to extinguish someone. I'll gladly spend the Jurati trying to save my burning medic over gambling with this asinine feature. So, supporting your team is a mixed bag. Like many things with Sniper, it's very map dependent and not something you can pull off consistently. To make up for that, sometimes you're going to need to take things into your own hands, and without the raw power of quickscopes, you're going to need some help from your other weapons. For your secondary weapons, the backpacks are very situational. The Danger Shield being the most situational, especially with the Sydney Sleeper considering you're far more encouraged to stay far away on the backline than you were before so pyros aren't nearly as much of a concern. The Razorback and Cozy Camper can work out for you better, especially considering how often you'll be hard scoping and how vulnerable you are to spies as a result of that, but they're not my personal picks. Same as with the Classic, if your damage output isn't up to snuff with the other primaries, I find it best to supplement it with one of the SMGs. I mentioned recently in my video covering the stock SMG that it pairs quite well with the Sydney Sleeper, allowing you to essentially play as a combo sniper. You soak an enemy with Jurati with your initial shot and pepper them down with the SMG as a follow-up, allowing you to deal pretty solid damage and finish off targets yourself without being forced to rely on your teammates. Sometimes the SMG damage feels like it needs a boost, and since you can't normally combine the Jurati and the SMG without getting lucky and finding a weapon pickup on the ground, this lets you more or less do the same thing, which can feel incredibly satisfying. Using the SMG lets you still play supportively, but with a little bit of insurance on the side, and is especially useful for close range self-defense, where your rifle now suffers as a result of your lack of headshots. Speaking of close range self-defense, special mention also goes to the Cleaner's Carbine and Bushwhacka. The mini crits of the Sydney Sleeper allow you to make up for the lower damage output of the Carbine, while charging up your Crikey Meter faster than normal. And if you combine it with the Bushwhacka, this makes you far more consistently able to defend yourself at close range, or just go on a spree if you feel like it. The Bushwhacka in general is a relatively safe pick as a melee, especially when random crits are disabled, as you can sometimes pull off a very fast and risky, but very effective and satisfying Sydney Sleeper to melee crit combo. But running the stock Kukri on a server with random crits enabled will give you fairly similar results in most situations without the need for a combo. But hey, it's still pretty sick when you hit it. Funnily enough, using the Sydney Sleeper to play combo sniper is easily the most fun I had with the weapon, which I find amusing primarily because I'm very critical of other snipers who only use the Jurati selfishly, but using the Sydney Sleeper in this way is the only real way I'm able to have fun with it. I think we've all learned a valuable lesson here today, and that's that this weapon is dumb. There's one more thing to mention here, and that's MVM. It's actually not bad in this game mode. Sniper's role in MVM is so drastically different from the base game, that not dealing as much single target damage isn't that big of a deal, since against big groups, you're relying on explosive headshot to do all the work anyways. It does suffer in this aspect against giants quite a bit, however the Jurati application can help make up for it with a competent team, and it really feels like the supportive weapon it was always meant to be. Explosive headshot to deal with groups and uber medics, and Jurati to help your team whittle down giants without your scout needing to switch to his fan of war over and over again. He can focus on applying milk and damage himself. Once you've fully upgraded your damage, your headshots will be able to one-shot light classes again, so it's not a huge loss against those targets, and the best part is that the stupid Jurati recharge stat actually makes a bit of a difference here. You're throwing out so many headshots so often and running into so many groups of robots 
Not to mention several robots who you'll want to slow down, that recharging your Jurati faster is not only far more practical, but also much more applicable. You can even combo your Jurati throw with your explosive headshot to deal mini crit explosive headshot damage, and that just packs even more of a punch while feeling like you're not wasting a precious resource, especially if you upgrade your Jurati's recharge speed. And that just about covers MVM, and the Sydney Sleeper in general. So, what the fuck? This is genuinely one of the most baffling, self-contradictory, and ultimately pointless weapons that I think exists in the game. But, I know a lot of people still really like it. I, however, am not one of those people. Some weapons I've made videos on have managed to win me over and make me a fan of them, but this was not one of them. And if I were to change it, I don't think I'd go so far as to remove the aspects of the gun that I know people like. I want this weapon to still be supportive. I think it's a really cool idea for a sniper primary, and I'm glad that there's another unique primary out there that doesn't just blend in with all the other ones. But the way it's supportive now rubs me the wrong way. So here's my proposition. Increase the max Gerati duration, and more importantly, headshots will now apply Gerati for the max duration regardless of charge level. This instantly improves everything about the weapon, letting you be more effectively supportive and allowing skilled snipers to play combo sniper far more effectively, which I think would be a lot of fun for both types of people who want to use this gun. For the most part, along with some other changes made to the sniper rifles on a base level, this is what we've done to the Sydney Sleeper on our rebalance servers which you can find linked in the description. It's still not my favorite rifle to use because I still have my biases, but it's a more fun, more refined version of a very confused weapon design. And that just about covers things. The Sydney Sleeper is a bizarre weapon, and it's one that I really want to like, but I just can't. I find it as frustrating to use as it is to talk about, and it's probably a weapon I won't be returning to anytime soon. But for all of you Sydney Sleeper fans out there, go out there and piss your enemies off and tell them Fish sent you. What the fuck is that war paint? I've never seen that before. It looks like a fucking texture's missing. <laughs> 